Hi, so as some of you might know or might not know, I am a freelance translator, but I also have an agency. So I work with other freelance translators for clients in other languages that I have nothing to do with. So my agency is by no means big, in fact it's very small and I don't actively look for new translators or stuff like that unless I have a specific job going on. Having said that, I get contacted very often. I would say every day it, between 5 and 10 emails from prospective freelance translators who are looking for a job. And so I wanted to go through briefly the do's and don'ts, at least from my point of view, of these letters when you're trying to contact an agency to work with them. I've seen some disasters and I've also seen some very good letters and so I wanted to go through and share my experience with that. So first of all is the subject line. The subject line is very important. In the subject line you put your language combination. If you translate from Swedish to English, then the subject line should say Swedish to English translator because that's the main thing I'm interested in at any given point in time. When I see an email coming in, if it is a language combination that I'm currently working in, I'm going to be quite interested. If it's another language combination, I probably won't be very interested at the moment. My system is to send you to my page in, on my, um, on my uh, website where you can fill out a form. When people give me the information, it's always all over the place. You know, some people put the languages first, some people put this or that experience or certification or whatever. So at least on the form it's standardized and I can look at everything in a standardized way. Well, if you're someone that I might be interested in right away, I will still ask you to fill out the form by the way, because if you don't fill out the form, then I know you're not really serious. But I'll only know that you're what I'm looking for if on the subject line it gives your language combination. So put it in the subject line. Even if I'm not interested in you, I'll always want you in the database anyway and with that you, you give a clear indication to any prospective employer. Secondly, don't start off your letter with hello dear, okay? Your English needs to be good. Even if your languages aren't English, if you're writing the letter in English, it shows that you have attention to detail, that you're not sloppy and that you, you know, have access to an editor. Now, I'm not thinking the email you sent to me is personal. I, don't, I wouldn't expect it. So obviously you're sending it to many different agencies. So that means you can find an editor to look over your English. And if one of your languages is English, then absolutely it has to be impeccable English. I don't know why, but I get so many emails that start off with hello dear. Hello dear is not an expression. Why do I get so many of these? I feel like at least once a day someone writes hello dear. You can write hello. You can write dear sir or madam, dear name, you know, and then the name or something. But hello dear is something you say to your wife or husband. Hello dear. Oh, hi dear. How's it going? So don't write that. And make sure your language is impeccable. Also, your strongest point has to be the first thing. I get all these emails. I'm sure other agencies that are bigger get many more emails. We're only gonna, you know, have so much time to look at it. If you studied at Oxford, got a master's in translation there or something like that, that's your first sentence. If you're certified by the ATA or anything, whatever is your most impressive, important point, put it up there. I once had a translator, in fact, recently, who, you know, gave no information almost, and then at the very bottom, there was a website, so I happened to click on the website just because it was something I was already looking for. And it was only after surfing around for a while, I realized she had translated some books published books with her name on the book. This is something you need to put right up top. Otherwise, your email should be short and sweet because I imagine most other agencies like me will just look for the standardized information or just have you fill out a standardized form. So I look for the language combination. I sure as hell don't want to see any typos and grammar mistakes. And if you have something impressive, it'll be in the first couple lines because that's as far as you can be guaranteed to look. You can't really guarantee much more. Any attachment, it's good to attach your resume, but if it's an unsolicited email, I'm not opening an attachment, I'm sorry. I don't know where, who you are and you know where it's been. Don't expect people to open the attachments. It's good to send your resume as well, but if they ask you to fill out the information on their online form anyway, then you're gonna have to do it, I'm sorry. That's pretty much it in the preliminaries. I can get more into detail and I can actually go through the emails or if you have an email that you've been sending prospective agencies and you want me to critique, I'd be happy to do so. But these are just some main pointers to please keep in mind when you contact agencies if you want them to take you seriously. Just keep in mind also that they're really busy with what they do and so you need to catch their eye right away. Your most impressive points, your specializations, and your um, language combination should be up in the subject. That should be the first thing they see.
that's pretty much it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please feel free to subscribe for more videos like this and please click like since that helps me and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Sabedum!